Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. So first up today we have official supercharging voting for Tesla, three month voting cycles. It looks like each cycle you'll be able to place five votes, one per location, and you can also recommend a new location. So you just log into your Tesla account, it will bring you to this map that is global so you can vote anywhere you'd like. And there will be this leaderboard down here in the bottom right. So far, Big Bear Lake, California, the most votes, 1,950. Ultimately, this should provide Tesla a great data set to use in tandem with the real world data it's already gathering at current supercharger locations. Next, you've probably all seen the two new paint colors from Giga Berlin, Quicksilver and Midnight Cherry Red, which are made from highly pigmented metallic paint designed to change depending on the viewing angle and the light. They do allow for up to 13 layers of depth, dimension, and a hand-painted look. So far, these new color options are only for the Model Y, not yet the Model 3, and only on the long range and performance variants, which will serve as a nice incentive for consumers to upgrade. Sadly though, these will not be coming to the States anytime soon, and for now, it'll just be for Europe and the Middle East. Elon said only Berlin can make these colors as the paint shop was specially built to apply many fine layers of paint, giving it complexity otherwise not possible. Pair that recent tweet with what he said back in April 2020, and I'd say for the foreseeable future, United States customers will have to just wait and hope. But we may be waiting until a new North American Gigafactory is producing cars since paint shop retrofits are tough. As a consolation prize though, Elon did say in the States we will get another color option, no word on what it will be. These color options aren't cheap though. The new red is 3,200 euros and the Quicksilver is 3,000. However, in an email to reservation holders, Tesla offered to upgrade to either of these new colors at no additional cost for existing long range and performance holders. We could see these new colors in the wild as soon as November. These new colors do replace other options, so there are still only five total color options available. So can't wait to see these pop up in YouTube videos and in the real world so we can see if this paint really is thicker and ultimately more scratch resistant than the cars coming out of Fremont and Austin. Next up, we have Drive Tesla Canada who picked up on the news item we talked about yesterday, that tier two supplier for Tesla out of China, saying that basically Hardware 4 was in mass production, Drive Tesla Canada reading between the lines saying that the new cameras should be with this hardware upgrade, bumping up to five megapixels from the current 1.2. I'm still working to confirm this, but I'm also hearing that with hardware four, up to 300 kilowatt charging will already be enabled. And I'm also hearing sometime in October was the transition to begin moving to hardware four. I can't confirm which vehicles and where geographically, but hopefully more to come next week. It's still anybody's guess how this will play out when it comes to possible retrofits. What I will say though is if you're on the fence right now, these type of upgrades are one that personally I would want to wait for if I had that optionality. Ordinarily, I wouldn't recommend waiting for all these new features because you'll never be happy, but hardware 4.0 is one personally I would want. Next up, we got a Q&A video from Monroe Live with Corey and Antonio, so here are my takeaways. They are going to sell a downloadable PDF for a few hundred dollars, giving us the charging curve testing information. I know a lot of people were wondering about C rates and discharge rates and all of that, so hopefully that will be available in the weeks to come. But it sounds like it will not be free. They showed some video of how they actually bored out each 4680 cell with these copper sleeves. I thought that was cool. It turns out Monroe actually spent 50% of the cost of the vehicle to just extract the cells. They did touch on the repairability of this 4680 everyone keeps asking. They ultimately said you have to choose between serviceability or reliability. Ultimately, there are trade-offs. And they said the number one cause of failure usually is fasteners, and this 4680 pack has no fasteners. So essentially, Tesla has chosen to optimize this 4680 structural pack for reliability. This really does contrast with basically every OEM because they've all historically been optimizing for serviceability because that's where they make their money. Antonio and Corey did say they found no empty 4680 cells in the pack, so no dummy cells, and again confirmed 828 in the pack. 
And Antonio explained why Tesla is using side cooling in this structural pack. He said it's more efficient for cylindrical cells, especially 4680s, given the larger surface area on the sides when compared to cooling from the bottom. Full video linked below. Here we have an insightful tweet from the accountant on Twitter. With wait time declining, Tesla customer deposits should be down, right? Turns out they're up 17%, as you can see in the chart on the left, despite deliveries being up 45% this year through the first three quarters of the year. When deposits are up, orders are growing faster than deliveries. Perhaps wait times are down, not from lack of orders, but from production going up. Essentially, when Tesla receives new orders, customer deposits goes up. Then when those cars are delivered, that will of course reduce the customer deposit line. I have to say this metric though is not perfect because these deposits can be for auto and energy, but generally speaking, it's primarily driven by the auto side. So the takeaway is if the customer deposit line continues to increase, that means new orders are coming in faster than vehicles are being delivered. Here's a quick recession update from Elon asked about how long this recession may last. He said just guessing, but probably until spring of 2024. And he added Tesla and SpaceX are in good positions, but many other companies are not. Recessions do have a silver lining in that companies that shouldn't exist stop existing. Next, just something to watch out of Giga Shanghai from Umbizum. Tesla China has completely changed the logistic planning in Shanghai. Seems loading is now quite real time from the production line to the chargers, to the quality checks and into the trucks, cutting down on parking lot time, could be smoothing out of the delivery waves in action already. Or this could turn out just to be an anomaly, but we'll keep an eye on it. Next up, just a quick picture from gf for tesla on Twitter. This is the 4680 cell building in Berlin, clearly not being destroyed or leveled, and the sign has gone up. Next up, we have this awesome visualization from James Stevenson of Tesla's cumulative net income since IPO. It's fun to watch, but it's also important to keep this in mind as we watch other companies like Rivian and Lucid. They're going to have to go through something like this. It took Tesla basically the better part of a decade and around $6 billion of cumulative net losses before being able to see this inflection on the way up. It's just good to keep in mind as we continually compare every other company to Tesla, let us not forget where Tesla came from. Here we have some news that all new Model Ys built in Fremont after October 20th will have this parcel shelf. This was confirmed in an email to employees and this feature has already been available in every Model Y made at Giga Texas since August. Next up from Reuters, they essentially compiled all of the publicly available information for all of these OEMs that have promised how much they're going to be spending and how many EVs they're going to make over this decade and they totaled them all. The result, these automakers are planning to spend $1.2 trillion between now and 2030 to produce of course millions of EVs. How many million? Well, they're forecasting for 54 million BEVs by 2030. Of course, to get anywhere near there, you need a ton of batteries and all of these automakers combined planning to install 5.8 terawatt hours of battery production capacity by 2030. The rest of the article goes on to break it down by each automaker, so I'll link this below, but for me, I'll believe it when I see it. Next up, just a few bullet points on the upcoming Sierra EV Denali, the edition one. This is going to be the first variant available for $107,000 and GMC is now taking reservations for it. They're expecting to ship this edition one in early 2024, and of course offer lower price models later that year. That they're saying should be in the neighborhood of $50,000. GM is touting features like 400 miles of range, fast charging up to 350 kilowatts, the crab walk, all of these different things, but for now they're just promises as this is still over a year away. It's set to use an 800 volt architecture and it'll serve as a mobile power source with 10 different outlets on board, providing 10.2 kilowatts of power and it should have vehicle to grid capability as well. Next up, we have another thread to watch with new proposed legislation in New Jersey. We have some lawmakers looking to ban in-car subscriptions, but it's not what you may think. They're just looking to ban subscriptions for hardware that's already installed in the cars at the time of purchase. Think of customers having to pay a subscription fee for a remote start or heated seats. These hardware components are pre-installed in the cars already. 
these subscriptions would be unlawful if there was no ongoing expense to the dealer, manufacturer, or any third-party service provider. Basically, if there's no ongoing cost to maintain or run a service, a subscription for that feature would be illegal and result in penalties of up to $20,000 per violation. This of course is not law yet and is newly proposed, but this could have a big impact on companies like BMW, Mercedes, and Ford who are seemingly focused on recurring software sales after the vehicle is delivered. Next up, we have one that I think is going to be super important to watch. We've talked about it a lot over the last few weeks. There may be some changes to the IRA because there's been a ton of pushback. Now we have an example of CATL basically saying their plans that they had to expand in North America may be on hold because the cost to make batteries with the sourcing requirements of the Inflation Reduction Act may drive up the prices too high, especially when you compare it to just making the batteries in China and then exporting to the United States. CATL has been planning and vetting different sites in North America for a big battery factories, Mexico, South Carolina, Kentucky, but now they're rethinking all of those because of the Inflation Reduction Act. They said the rules would hike the cost of manufacturing batteries in the US to a level higher than shipping them from China, even if the US government offers subsidies for CATL to build the plants. Honestly, it's a weird convoluted situation because on one hand, the IRA was meant to break our reliance on China for batteries rather than just having all of the Chinese companies set up shop here in North America. But then the question has to be asked, well, if these Chinese companies aren't going to come here as they were planning, who is left to really make all of this new battery capacity? This one will be very interesting to watch and furthers my belief we will see some changes and adjustments to the IRA before the end of the year. Next up, it looks like Rivian has already completed the recall service for most of the repairs for that loose fastener for the R1T and the R1S. RJ said, we literally mobilized our entire service network to say, let's go through these vehicles really fast. We were honest about it. We didn't cover it up. We said, we're going to fix this. And so in fact, there was something really positive. And to send you guys off into your weekend, I think we should all be collecting screenshots of all of the headlines that look like this now and in the weeks to come so that when this $4 trillion Tesla market cap does happen, we can look back at everything we've collected and say, ah, would you look at this? Hope you guys have a wonderful and a safe weekend. Please like the video if you did, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.